So we did some calculations on any reflection coatings. If you look in a catalog of optical components and look in the section on interference filters, you'll see filters based on thin films with very impressive performance. Here, let me show you one. So there you can see that it only transmits a certain wavelength with a very narrow wavelength range. Here's another one. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, so we've got to figure out how is that possible? Because we calculated something that looked like this with our interference filter or our, our, our thin film uh, reflection. We got big R and here I plot it as a function of wavelength. You know really you're plotting it as a function of delta, the phase difference between the front and the back. And that could be due to the wavelength, it could be due to the angle, it could be due to the thickness, it could be due to a lot of things. But whatever it is, when we plot it, we get kind of a smooth sinusoid. We don't get a sharp, uh, sharp spectral feature. So how do they do that? Well, it has to do with the subject of this unit, multiple beam interference. All right, so let's think back to our dielectric film, which as always is glass. It has some index in, and out here we have index of air, say one. And we thought about this before, we brought in an electric field E naught, and we said, oh, it strikes with respect to the normal, so it's going to um, transmit in, kind of like that. It's going to reflect there, and you're going to get some coming out like that. And of course, I forgot to draw some coming out like that. So this one was R E naught, and we know that near normal incidence for the index of about glass, it's about 4%. And this one is T E naught, and then T with an internal reflection E naught, and then another transmission. And we said this one was close to 4%, because you get mostly, uh, almost all the um, E field goes in, 4% reflects here, and then almost all of it goes out. What we're gonna do now is keep up with that more carefully. So let's do the external reflection. Let's call that R. And let's call the external transmissions, so that's going into the glass, T. And let's go ahead and label the internal reflection, R prime, and the internal uh, transmission, that's basically going from inside the glass or the dielectric to the outside as T prime. So internal processes have a prime on them and external don't, okay? So this would be R prime. Here it is T E naught here. It's, and then that amplitude is reflected, so it's T times R prime E naught. And then that amplitude is transmitted, so it's T T prime R prime E naught. This is T T prime R prime E naught. If we wanna know the E field amplitude that comes out right there. And before, we sort of argued that those are, this is 4%, this is almost 4%. And we also argued that this would be really small because some of it will reflect again. Whoops, drew that a little big. And it'll come back up. I can't live with that. Let's see if we draw it again. So it'll come down like this. And it'll come back up. And then it'll come out. And what is this one? This is uh, T, so it goes in. And it has to come out, T prime. But then look at all the R primes it goes through. It goes through one R prime, R prime, R prime. R prime cubed, E naught. And this is the one that we argued is really small because T and T prime are close to one. R prime and R are close to 4%. So here we have 4% cubed. Right? So that's why this one we said is small. We can ignore it. This one is small, even smaller. T, T prime has to go in and out. And this one goes through five reflections, R prime to the fifth, E naught. Four percent to the fifth, really, or I'm sorry, not four percent, 0.2 to the fifth, 
That's really small. This is 0.2 cubed. And then what about this one? E T T prime has to go in and out. R prime to the seventh E naught. Is it really the seventh? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. T T prime R prime to the seventh E naught. So these are very weak. So we ignored them before, but there's a big but. There are a lot of them, like infinity of them, because they just keep going. So you have infinite terms. They're getting smaller and smaller. You know what that means. Sometimes it sums up to something significant, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so what we're going to do is actually keep up with all of them and add them together. But we also have to consider the fact that they could interfere. Maybe they'll interfere constructively. Maybe they'll interfere destructively. Who knows what they'll do? So we have to also keep up with the phase factors. So what is the delta? Well, the delta is 2 pi over lambda naught times the path difference plus, in this case, the phase difference is just due to reflections. Okay. So the phase difference, the only way we can pick up a phase difference is reflections. That's always a factor of 0 or 180, unless we get into total internal, beyond the critical angle. We won't do that. We'll stay near the normal. So it can be 0 or 180, but that can be kept up with with the sine of r and r prime. So basically, we'll ignore this one. This will show up as the sine of r or r prime. But this one we have to keep up with. And it's actually going to be different for each uh, one, right? Because this one goes through twice. This one goes through uh, four times and six times, right? So generally, the delta p's there's something like 2 times the thickness, which this time we're going to call d, because we have t's all over the place. So 2 has something to do with uh, d, has something to do with n. And then you also have to consider some geometry. Usually we write it in terms of theta transmitted angle. Right? So then you have a cosine theta t here. So that would be the phase uh, for this first one. But then the other one goes through twice, multiple, multiple times. So we're going to have to keep up with that as well. Okay? So now it's set up, and we'll add all these up, see what happens.